It was week 10 of the pandemic and I was about 40 minutes into a Google search of Brad Pitt buzz cut when I had a feeling of deja vu. There was another 10 week period when I was more or less locked in the house and the outside world felt dangerous. It was seven years ago when my husband Chris got sober. You're probably wondering why I was looking for images of Brad Pitt with a buzz cut. Or maybe you're not wondering that at all because you too are 10 plus weeks into homeschooling a five year old. You see, I was seriously considering recreating all of those images of Brad using Monty, my kid the five-year-old I mentioned earlier. I even spent a good 10 minutes just trying to find a child-sized white cowboy hat. I had already decided I'd use a lollipop wherever Brad had a cigarette. I think it's fair to say that I've lost a portion of my mind in quarantine. I called to Chris who was in the bathroom playing video games and I said, two things. I said, one, should we recreate these photos of Brad Pitt with Monty? And doesn't this time remind you of when you got sober? Maybe it's absurd to compare one man's drying up to a global pandemic, but the feelings I had were similar. No, I didn't have to wear a mask and gloves to leave my house, but literally every outing we went on felt scary. Would someone offer Chris booze? Would he take it? Would he see some booze and want it? Would he accidentally drink booze and not be able to stop? The world felt like an obstacle course where every obstacle was booze. I said to Chris, when you were sobering up, the outside world felt really dangerous to me like it does now. Do you feel that way? I mean, I don't, I don't know that it felt dangerous to me. It's just that we were, like we are now, making the decision to be safe. And safety meant staying inside. But isn't that the same thing? Well, I think it's just a matter of that you're focusing on the outside was dangerous and I'm focusing on the inside being safe. You know, because I could stay inside, control the environment, and reduce my risk and reduce our risk. Then he said, I mean, I think when I was drinking and using drugs, I was searching for something outside of myself to tell me who I was. But then when I stopped drinking, I had to remember who I was. And so I kind of became the person I was before I started drinking, which is a 13-year-old kid. (laughs) And before I quit, thinking about quitting produced this, like, you know, feeling in me. He described the feeling to me and I was like, that's called FOMO. But he didn't know the acronym despite being a millennial. I thought I should be out there. Uh, People expected me to be there. Uh, Making people laugh, talking to bartenders, getting free drinks. But then um, when I quit, I did have some switch go off in my brain where, you know, I just realized wherever I would have been, it would have been me who was there. And so wherever I am, it'll be me who's there. So I can just enjoy who I am wherever I'm at at that moment. Wait, that was complicated. Let's hear that again. Wherever I would have been, it would have been me who was there. And so wherever I am, it'll be me who's there. So I can just enjoy who I am wherever I'm at at that moment. By week 11 of the pandemic, things seemed to be changing course. Cuomo said we could begin gathering in groups of 10, but then something happened. We were in a new moment. And along with thousands and thousands of other people, we felt like the safety of being inside was less important than standing in solidarity. So whether we're outside protesting or inside recreating Brad Pitt photos, wherever we are, that's where we'll find ourselves. Good job. Okay.